Imagine a young lady is exercising on a treadmill in the gym on a Sunday morning. As the speed increases, she can't keep up the pace. She gets behind and falls backward on the floor. While falling, her leg twists inwards. She hears a clunking noise in her knee. She manages to stand up with great difficulty but can't resume her activity on the treadmill. She can't even walk. She can barely take a few steps. She notices swelling in her knee. She has just injured her knee ligament. And this is the typical type of injury in which one injures the knee ligament. Although the scenario of a girl in India is less frequent, it affects males more often than ladies and the common mode of injury of males getting an ACL injury in India is a motorcycle accident as they are going suddenly they apply a sudden brake as somebody crosses the road either an animal or a child or the red light they balance themselves by putting placing one leg on the road the leg twists and then they develop a swelling and pain in the knee. This is the characteristic type of ACL injury. Hello, welcome to this live session on ACL injuries. We will see why the anterior cruciate ligament or ACL is an important structure. The anterior cruciate ligament or the ACL, which is an abbreviation, is one of the four ligaments in the knee joint. The anterior and posterior cruciate, cruciate means cross-shaped. They lie within the knee. And then there are two more ligaments which lie on the outside of the knee. These are the medial and the lateral collateral ligaments. Now let's straight away see what these are on the model of the knee. This is a model of the knee. This is the thigh bone and this is the leg bone. This is the right knee because the, there is a thin bone which is towards the outside. So, and this is the inside. So this ligament is outside the knee joint. It is a medial collateral ligament of the knee joint. This ligament is outside the knee joint and it is a lateral collateral ligament of the knee joint. As we look into the knee joint by retracting the patella, there are two ligaments here. One is in the front and another is in the back. You can see the two ligaments there, front and back one. The one at the back is known as the posterior cruciate ligament and the one in the front it's not so demarcated here. Running from the inside to the outside here is the right knee. Uh, that is the anterior cruciate or front cross shape ligament. So it arises from the inside of the knee joint. That is the lateral condyle of the femur or thigh bone and is attached to the medial eminence of the tibia or leg bone. Its main function is to stabilize the leg bone and prevent it from sliding to the front. ACL injuries are one of the commonest injuries in sports and act as a trigger for further damage. Now, having got a basic understanding of the ACL and the mechanism of injury, how we, the question I've already answered is, how does the ACL get injured? I have already described two types of mechanism. One is in domestic accidents like uh, the gym or at a fall at home or in sports or in motorcycle accidents, which I have again described at the beginning of the motorcyclist at a crossroad. So how does the person who gets injured know that the ACL has been injured? Usually at the moment of injury, the person will feel a clunk or hear a clunk in the knee. As the ligament gets ruptured 
and the bones dash against each other that produces the clunk rather than the ligament rupturing so it's the clunk of the bones dashing against each other which produces the clunk and which may if the ambient noise is ambient surrounding noise is uh, quiet one may appreciate it further after the injury the person will not able to stand up and will not be able to resume whatever activity the person was doing say if he was playing football he can't he can't he can barely take a few steps say if the person was exercising she they won't be able to exercise motorcyclists yes uh, there will be some sudden start of uh, looseness or the knee will feel loose the knee will swell immediately because the ligament is situated inside the knee and there is a blood vessels going into the ligament are torn and there is a collection of blood inside the knee joint this is known as an effusion or hemarthrosis or a collection of blood so if with this scenario you go and consult a doctor the doctor can say that you might have probably injured the acl he might do some tests which is gentle and which should not hurt you one of them is known as the lachman test that is just by trying to move the knee joint in the flex position slightly with the knee bent around 30 degrees if there is damage to the acl the knee will move forward in the normal situation it won't move forward so the doctor will know that you have damaged the acl on some high degree of probability to advise you to settle the swelling with some ice and then he may order an mri an mri will show the acl injury very soon suppose the acl injury is confirmed what is to be done now now the orthopedic surgeon has to decide the next course of action based on the examination of the patient and his expectations initially every orthopedic surgeon a bar sum will advise you to take rest use a compression bandage and you will be use some support if some orthopedic surgeon says that immediate surgery is required that is not the correct thing to do you have to take rest in the beginning don't submit yourself for any surgery by whatever cajoling or coaxing it should not be done because acl injuries sometimes if they may be partial they may heal but most importantly as i said there is some blood collection inside the knee joint that has to settle down and only then if at all surgery is to be done after discussion with you with your expectation it can be done so partial acl, ACL injuries cannot heal on their own and if you have some expectation out of your life then it does require surgery more frequently more often so if the orthopedic surgeon advises you surgery what is the best time to operate i said immediately it is a no no the best time to operate is when the swelling inside the knee has settled down and the damage to the other structures the mcl we showed you the mcl the one of the other ligaments in the knee joint that is usually damaged there's a grade 1 or grade 2 sprain that has to settle down so the ideal time to operate is around 6 weeks it should not be delayed further because beyond 6 weeks if the knee is unstable then every time the person comes down or tries to run the knee is unstable and further damage to the menisci and cartilage can result all of which may add up and in the long run may may lead to post traumatic arthritis this can develop in as early as say one or two years and the patient will start experiencing pain at that point it may be too late to just do an acl reconstruction alone because more issues inside the knee will have to be addressed there might be a bucket handle tear of the meniscus or there might be damage to the cartilage articular cartilage there might be a cartilage lesion because of the initial injury as well as due to the ongoing instability and further injury 
So a bigger procedure may be required if you delay it too much. So what does the surgery called and what does it consist of? The surgery is called an ACL reconstruction because it is not possible very often to repair the ACL with a needle and thread or even by bracing. So an ACL reconstruction is used. In this, the tendon is the ligament is not repaired using sutures, but a graft is taken. Graft means another part of a soft tissue from your body around the knee usually can be taken from the front of the leg, front of the knee or from the inner side of the leg. The front portion, we take it from the patellar tendon. So here is the patellar tendon. This is the patella or kneecap and the tendon below this is the patellar tendon. It starts from the lower border of the patella and joins to the upper at a bony prominence called as a tibial tubercle and this is the patellar tendon. If you look at it sideways, this is the patellar tendon. We take the central third of it, harvest it, taking a small 10 centimeter, 10 millimeter length of bone from the patella anterior, the front surface and the bone from the lower end at the leg bone where it attaches here. So there is a bone plug here and a bone plug here. And in between there is a, a seven or eight centimeter long soft tissue. So this is the central third patellar tendon autograft. The advantage of this, this is one. And then we have the graft taken from the hamstring tendons. So the hamstring tendons are not shown here. Usually they are attached. They come from the inner side of the thigh like that from the thigh and they are attached here about four centimeters, four finger breadths below the joint line. This is the joint line and uh, about two centi an inch to the inner side of the tibial tubercle. They are oriented in this. So you see the my fingers are mimicking the attachment of the hamstring tendons and they are going up like that. So one of these tendons, usually the top one is known as a gracilis and the bottom one is known as the semitendinosis. It is going up in the thigh like that. That is harvested and this is known as a hamstring graft and that is quadrupled and used to reconstruct the ACL. So this is, these are the sources of the graft. The basic technique of the ACL is the surgeon after harvesting the graft positions an arthroscope through small tiny incisions into the knee joint and then observing the knee joint under a television monitor outside. He can see he uses a special instrument known as a jig. He drills a hole in the femur bone which is not here now and uh, drills a tunnel. This tunnel is known as the femoral tunnel in the outer part of the femur bone. This is the femur bone and this is the place where it uh, starts. It comes out here and the tunnel is somewhat transverse. This is the right knee. So transverse like that. That's the femoral tunnel. Then there is another tunnel in the tibia right from here, somewhere around here and it emerges in the center at the top in the, in the in the inside the knee joint towards the front of the knee joint at the level of the lateral meniscus and through this the graft is threaded and fixed at the top at the top here by a small metal button known as an endo button and here by here by another button known as the tibial tunnel button. So this is the surgery which has been described. These are the two common sources of the graft. Sometimes if patient asks, you can get it from the bone bank or tissue bank that is known as an allograft. The previous two 
grafts are known as orthograft because that is taken from your own body there is no danger of taking a tissue from your own body especially the hamstring graft because that will grow back with the patellar tendon there may be some discomfort uh, in the front of the knee uh, and some anterior knee pain and always the strength of the quadriceps tendon is compromised a little bit so there may be some weakness with the hamstring graft there is no such uh, side effect it heals back and it's it can be taken through a small incision so the harm caused to your body is less so these are the pros and cons of the two types of graft the pros of the quadriceps or the patellar tendon graft is that since there is a bone it can be fixed at the top and bottom by screws so there is stability and high uh, high demand athletes usually ask for this so that they can resume back to the sports which is their source of livelihood and they can return to sports faster but usually uh, hamstring grafts are better strength wise both are the same a quadrupled uh, hamstring graft actually has got a more uh, circumference and area and it gives more uh, area of connective tissue basically there is no difference between the two Uh, the except that the morbidity associated with the hamstring graft is less now some people say that we have heard of a partial acl tear and what and uh, then a complete acl tear can you explain a little bit about these two a partial partial means it's self explanatory the acl has got two bundles crossing like that uh antromedial bundle and a posterolateral bundle so both of them are joined like that inside the knee joint a partial tear may involve either of them so one bundle or the other bundle so one bundle is intact the other is torn it may be either of them or in the mid substance where they intertwine and cross there may be a sprain of the ligament and um, a grade 1 or a grade 2 and that may be called a partial uh acl tear however these partial tears are rare and usually it is a complete tear in the mid substance of the acl this is a very most or sometimes at the top end where it arises from the thigh bone or the femoral attachment a complete acl tear is a total disruption of the acl and usually occurs in the mid substance of the acl complete acl tears to repeat are the commonest type of acl injuries so since i mentioned two types of acl injuries how are these two types treated a partial tear is rare and it needs to be confirmed by probing during arthroscopy or keyhole surgery if it is indeed confirmed that the partial tear is involving one of the two bundles then an attempt can be made to repair the involved bundle using a stitch we try to use an instrument to get a bite in the partial tendon and fix it to the bone and take a bite in the bone and soft tissue or drill the tunnel and fix it with the button outside the other part is still intact so only one area one bundle one end has to be repaired and then augment the repair augment means make it better or increase improve the result with biologics like platelet rich plasma or stromal vascular fraction or bone marrow stem cells or bone marrow signaling cells complete acl tears need acl reconstruction as i have described before based on certain criteria certain criteria means when the patient is symptomatic he cannot take six steps on a six he cannot hop on his leg six times he has more than one episode of giving way in a year and there is definitely some laxity so these are the criteria there are six of them and these criteria are fulfilled then the patient requires a acl reconstruction how is the surgery performed i said it is done through a keyhole surgery first the tendon is harvested and then i'll perform arthroscopic examination of the knee to diagnose if there were other injuries to the meniscus and cartilage we just note them we don't do anything if if they are more than simple then i will place the graft fix it and close 
the patient will be observed for a couple of hours and can can be discharged on the same evening how do i fix the graft at present i use a button at the tibial end and a tight rope at the femoral end both are metal small buttons flat objects the advantage they are made up of metal the advantage is that if a revision is required that means a redo is required which is rare in my practice as i will explain later then these implants can be easily removed or they can be left alone also because they are not encroaching into the bone as i said they are only lying at the surface of the knee here as you open up the joint uh, the area it will just fall out and similarly the bone the object at the other end of the thigh bone that is also lying on the surface of the leg thigh bone and that can also be removed so they can be removed without any bone loss some people are very particular i've heard about uh, screws uh, and some of these screws are made up of uh, absorbable materials there are a lot of tall claims about this group they don't get absorbed and they have to they when when they when we do a revision usually is there is some bone loss so i use uh, minimally uh, small buttons at the both the ends what is the one can use metal screws which are cost effective they can also be removed they don't cause too much bone loss but uh, one can use absorbable screws also the advantage of the absorbable screws is that they don't uh, cause a signal when you are traveling at the airport what is the immediate uh, post operative management after an acl reconstruction the most important thing to do is that the leg has to be kept straight in a brace for a week then the patient performs gentle exercises like moving the ankle and tightening the thigh muscles this is known as ankle pumps and quadriceps sets from the second week onwards the patient can start to move the knee at the end of the second week the sutures are removed and the patient continues to mobilize the knee the mobilization starts and the goal is to achieve 90 degree of bending by about 6 weeks so what is the rehabilitation what is my rehabilitation protocol my rehabilitation protocol is um, called as an accelerated rehabilitation protocol in case of a patellar tendon graft the patient can wait bear immediately after the surgery but in case of hamstring graft the patient has to remain non weight bearing and use crutches for a period of 6 weeks exercise progressive knee bending is increased and the goal is to achieve 90 degrees of knee bending by about 6 weeks after the sutures are removed that is a 2 weeks or the ends are cut off pool exercises swimming pool exercises can be commenced rehabilitation continues for about 3 weeks or 3 3 months for non athletic patients but in the case of athletes it has to be pursued or continued till 1 year so athletes and uh, athletic oriented people ask when can i start running i tell them that they can start running in a straight line after 6 months and around a curve by 1 year can the patient return to the pre injury level of sports with proper technique and rehabilitation it is quite possible to return to the pre injury level of sport what are the recent advances in acl reconstruction till now surgeons were positioning the graft in the non anatomical position without the help of precise guidance this was due to the confusion about the acl attachment and their orientation of the uh, acl when the surgeon is operating usually the leg is straight and we talk about the acl attachment of the leg in the straight position but when the leg is bent to 90 degrees the orientation completely changes so the uh, orientation has to be taken in the 90 degree bending bent knee and uh, you have to position the knee exactly at the original anatomic attachment this is known as the anatomical acl or anatomical footprint reconstruction up till now the footprint was only vaguely felt and they say they would visualize the acl and say ha here it is and you can drill the hole there 
what was the result when the vague position was obtained when the vague drilling was up, uh, followed there was some stability in the front to back position but rotationally there would be a uh, rotational instability and while running the patient could not run and further damage was resulting so i have introduced a new technique called ruler method for anatomical ACL reconstruction you can google this google it ruler method using a dedicated ruler for anatomical ACL reconstruction there is a technique of the video and there is also a testimonial of the patient you can see this procedure at this point let me remind you of my youtube channel because all of you were watching this on youtube and you will see all the procedures especially the anatomic acl reconstruction which i just mentioned it is on youtube and my youtube channel is alam pallam venkatachalam okay a l a m p a w l a m alam pallam venkatachalam and uh, it is by for short it is a k venkat if you go into this you will see my name and my practice and my practice is known as the mjrc clinic mjrc is an abbreviation which used to stand for madras joint replacement center now it also stands for madras joint preservation and reconstruction center now my focus is more on preserving the knee joint my, my main goal area of expertise is the knee joint earlier i was replacing now my added focus is on regenerating and joint preservation so mjrc stands for mj joint replacement and preservation so please visit my please visit my uh, website youtube channel to see the anatomical method my website is www.neeindia.com i'll repeat k n e e i n d i a neeindia.com so once the patient has had an acl reconstruction what is the prognosis for a patient who has sustained an acl injury can one avoid arthritis by acl reconstruction well, the news is mixed the bad part is that one cannot avoid arthritis totally by acl reconstruction however the symptoms of an acl deficiency like giving way of the knee can be halted and the giving way results in further damage and the further damage to the meniscus and articular cartilage can be prevented by an acl reconstruction many people although they have had acl reconstruction because of the initial damage to the cartilage remember i said there is a trunk within the knee that is due to the banging together of the articular cartilage and that is now thought to be the resulting factor for uh, arthritis in that part of the knee so they do develop uh, uh, arthritis but the symptoms and further damage can be prevented what is the role of biologics in an acl injuries biologics biological substances are substances harvested or taken from your own body they consist commonly of a substance from the blood known as platelet rich plasma and cells taken from the bone marrow or the fat these cells are known as signaling cells so they are known as medicinal signaling cells and the cells have got a lot longer potency these cells are platelet rich plasma there is no evidence that they can regrow at torn acl i have posted a couple of videos of acl partial acl tear repair with biologics as i said they can only augment a partial tear but cannot regrow or replace a completely torn acl every day or once a week i get a call from patients i have damaged my acl can you, you are using stem cells uh, or signaling cells 
can you repair, re regrow my ACL with these cells or platelet rich plasma? I have to tell them to go and refer to my website. There are a couple of videos, and uh, none of them say that the cells or PRP can regrow an ACL. You might have, people might have heard um, on the web that certain some people in India and abroad are trying to, are they claiming that they can regrow an ACL with cells. Those are all tall claims and um, they're pseudoscience. It's not uh, advisable to uh, heed them. So please uh, see these two procedures of so partial ACL repair with ACL uh, with uh, uh, cells. In this, I may add that in the US recently, a couple of years back, a biologic graft for ACL is also available in the US. This is known as the Bayer method, B-E-A-R. A synthetic uh, an animal graft or a xenograft from pig porcine graft is used as a tunnel and it is uh, and cells are added uh, it is this graft is placed over the damaged acl and sutured at both the ends and cells are injected inside the sleeve of this graft and that can grow there is some limited success by the scientist uh, by the orthopedic surgeon you can search it but it is not available in india so dear friends that's all we have time for today. See you next time. Until then, bye. Have a nice day.